let's establish simple sound definitions for solo vowels and vowel combos. Right off the bat, we're getting rid of most of the combos, AE, AO, AU, and the others listed here. First, let's look at the E, the most common letter in the English language. Currently, when the E is doubled, it goes from the short E sound, E, eh, as in bet and pep, to the long E sound, E, as in beat and peep. It's such a simple and direct rule that that's how we're going to treat all full-time vowels, as follows. The short A, A, ah, remains single A, as in hat and attic. By the way, hat is like many of our current words in that it's already spelled properly. Simply double the A to get the long A, A, as in great, main, ache, valet, and mate. Notice in mate how the doubled vowel takes the place of the silent E that's often used to make a vowel have the long sound. What we refer to as the air A, A, is the AI combination, as is already used in hair and tail, and will now be used in care. The aw sound will be spelled AW as in law, call, halt, and the word or in any of its three spellings. Looks confusing, but the O in or is not the short O as in hot. You don't say R, you say or, so it'll work, trust me. The short E, E sound, as described before, will be represented by a single E as in kept, meant, and dressed. Notice we deleted the final E in dressed, since it's not pronounced dressed. We also halved the double S and replaced the final D with the T to more accurately indicate the sound of this past tense verb. Here's the long E spelled with two E's, as in deep, easy, king, ear, weird, ski, and skiing. Notice that each of the I's in skiing has been replaced by two E's. Sorry, it is what it is. The short I, the I sound, will be represented by a single I, as in hit, mimic, hypnotic, and bin. Like our other long vowel sounds, the I will be doubled for ice, height, and sky. We pose a question. Should we make an exception and keep the traditional spelling of the pronoun I as a single capital I? Discuss amongst yourselves. This one gets confusing. The short O is the ah sound as in hot and bother. But we also assert that the short O sound appears as the A and EA in father, car, R and heart, so we'll use the single O in all those words. It doesn't look right, but it is. Some dictionaries suggest the A in father has a unique sound, identified as an A with two dots overhead, but they're wrong. It's simply a short O. We associate the double O with words like boot, but that's really long U, and book, but that's really a schwa sound, which we still haven't talked about. Double O's will only represent long O, pronounced as O. Vote, no, flow, don't, and notice. Notice we've also brought back close and close to, well, close the loop on full transformation into the new spelling. Next, we have the oi sound, which is nicely represented by the oi in oil. So we'll stick with that and use it in toy and destroy. It also seems logical to use ow as the ow sound, so that's what we'll do. Now, couch. The short U, the A uh, sound, is a single U as in up, and also replaces the single and double O's in covet and flood. For the long U sound, U, we use two U's. Boot, who, lose, crew, beauty. For the ER sound, we'll steal the UR from blur because it seems to fit well, and splice it into other words that need it, like bird, work, and learn. By the way, with the vowel reassignments we've introduced so far, we can actually eliminate the I before E except after C confusion. Those two combinations simply go away. The respelled friend, thief, receive, ceiling, neighbor, way, height, and seas illustrate the advantages of the new system. Last but not least, we're going to focus on the Y. As a vowel, the Y is currently used in place of the long E in happy, the long I in type, the short I in hypnotic, and as a vowel lengthener in may, for example. So we don't really need the Y for those. What we need it for is the vowel sound called schwa, currently represented by any number of vowels and vowel pairs. Schwa sounds like a grunt, uh. It's the A in about, the second E in telephone, the I in April, the O in comply, the double O in good, 
and the U in focus and put. And it's the most prevalent vowel sound in English, but has no specific letter assigned to it, except in dictionaries, where they invented the upside-down E symbol a hundred years ago to represent it. So, instead of using all these random vowels to represent schwa in the real world, while using an upside-down E in the dictionary, we'll use our sometimes vowel Y as the uh sound. It's a tough task, but the Y is up to it. Look at the new spellings while I say them. About, telephone, April, comply, good, focus, put. Even though the Y is going both ways, so to speak, it won't be confusing. It's a consonant when followed by a vowel as shown in yellow, yes and beyond, and a vowel when followed by a consonant or nothing as shown in blue, about and panda. The article the will be pronounced two ways depending on use, just like it is now. Before a vowel, we pronounce it the, the end. Before a consonant, we pronounce it the, the beginning. What changes is that we'll spell it two ways from now on, Q-E-E -E or Q-Y. We'll also be making slight adjustments to account for the actual sounds of common endings and suffixes. For plurals, use the S, Z, or I, Z, depending on the sound. Bits, legs, kisses. For past tense, for one syllable results, we'll just add a D or a T, no need to double the last consonant. For two syllable results, just add ID. Freed, slammed, stamped, blasted. For present participle, just add double E, N, G. Running, playing. Now let's go back and respell some of the words we reviewed at the beginning as examples of why written English is so bad. Neighbor, psychology, sign, dumb, talk, sword. Cool, city, genuine, geyser. Cello, bocce, vivacious. Charm, charade, character. Knife, pneumatic. Phone, technique. For, of. City, cap. Chin, stretch, church. Charade, panache. Stomach, chaos. Sing, fuse. Pleasure, vision. Quit, quiche, boutique. Then, wither, smooth. Accident, exact, xenon, anxious. Progress, muffin, sudden, unnerve. Bomb, comb, tomb. Book, boot, blood. Goes, does, shoes. Cup, duke, cute, put. Wind, mind, dull, bull. Cord, word, soul, foul. Wallet, mallet, cork, work, speak, stake, lost, post, some, home, wasp, grasp, how, low, mint, pint, hear, heart, heard, lice, police, range, orange, science, conscience, age, image, mirage, independent, consonant, aced, acted, hoped, hopped, base, bass, Thought, through, do, bow, enough. Let's take a look at some more examples. First, 15 that get shorter when translated. Accent, chase, chemical, circuit, cottage. Crisscross, detached, knowledge, rookie, snatch. Stressful, teacher, there, watch, while. 15 that get longer. Able, below, choir, complicated, emergency, giant, huge, luxurious, melange, only, radii, review, taco, unique, union. Fifteen with no changes in the number of letters, among, awkward, becomes, exaggerate, function, happy, onion, nature, natural, speedometer, square, wound, Wound, tear, tear. And 15 that are spelled so well already, no change in spelling is needed. Beer, blast, end, establish, flap. Frown, inept, kept, next, pot. Plump, plus, pumpkin, tip top, up. Let's write an entire sentence in the new system. Under the new system, some words will gain a few letters. 
Some will lose a few. Some will have the same number of letters. Some won't need any translation. And overall, we'll be in better shape. The translation resulted in six fewer letters, demonstrating that the new system is more efficient. Efficiency extends to using abbreviations and other shortcuts, as long as we are consistent. OK is still OK. And taking it one step further, W slash O can be used in place of without, even in business writing. There's another benefit. Even though there will be standard or neutral spellings, Standardized English embodies structured flexibility that will allow us to accurately represent accents in writing. We do a little of this now, for comedic effect, such as when a journalist will write New York to exaggerate the New York accent. That's acceptable. Of course, we'd spell it like this, though the preferred spelling to go along with the preferred pronunciation of New York will be this. Or, when you park the car, with a preferred spelling like this, you can write it in a Bostonian accent as Pack the ca," and the reader will be able to understand it and say it with the intended accent. The new system is designed to evolve. For example, if we want to write the guttural sound ch found in some Middle Eastern and European languages, we could assign to it an unused consonant pair, such as XX. We can even resurrect the CH for it. In that case, this German word is spelled just about right. Achtung! One vowel adjustment, now it's right. Finally, to catalog all the component sounds and their spellings, we would maintain an online audio reference library. A few other aspects of the new language need consideration, but we'll simply pose the questions because we don't have all the answers. Will we need to create any new words to avoid confusion when soundalikes are spelled identically under the new system? Great, peace, meet, right, sight, no, and more. You decide. And should we make a handful of exceptions among one- and two-letter words if we can retain clarity? Or make a couple half-changes to bring them closer to perfection? And how about using an apostrophe for linking two consonants that naturally roll off each other with barely a vowel sound connecting them? Sudden and cradle are two such examples. The bottom line is, English must evolve into standardized English. And this is how you spell English in standardized English.